One year ago, Russia invaded Ukraine on February 24th. Russian President Vladimir Putin said today that Russia would deploy summit nuclear missiles, boosting its nuclear forces. This came after Putin said Russia would suspend its participation in the New START treaty. What does the U.S. read of these moves? I think it is uh, useful to pay attention to what Russia does. They have said they've suspended, not terminated their participation in New START. We will see what actions they take, and that will tell us a lot about where we're headed. Uh, President Biden also said, however, that right now we do not expect uh, President Putin to use nuclear weapons, something that the entire world is concerned about, as we all should be, and everyone should be ensuring and saying to President Putin not to take such action. It would change the world. Do you think Putin is posturing and not serious about using nuclear weapons? I think we will watch his actions, not just his words. Uh, and I think uh, suspending the New START treaty does not mean he's about to use nuclear weapons. Uh, he's just uh, taking a step uh, to suspend our ability to inspect each other's uh, stockpiles. Uh, he has said, however, that he will maintain the numbers that are agreed to. Uh, and some of the other provisions. So let's see what happens. Would President Biden's administration provide Ukraine with F-16 fighter jets and long-range missiles? Some congressional members are advocating for Ukraine for these items. Well, we understand why many are advocating for them and certainly understand why President Zelensky wants every weapon system that uh, he can imagine is necessary uh, for the prosecution of the war against uh, a, an aggressor like Vladimir Putin, who uh, took a premeditated, unprovoked, illegal action by invading a sovereign country a year ago, uh, as we're marking this week. Quite, quite astonishing in this day and age. Uh, and uh, yet, um, I think President Biden has made very, very thoughtful decisions ensuring that the weapons we supply match the needs on the battlefield. We are in constant communications with the Ukrainians about their needs. Uh, Fifty nations around the world have supplied some support to Ukraine, whether that's economic assistance or humanitarian assistance or weapons. Uh, and I think um, it is a really remarkable time that there is such a strong alliance of countries around the world that are supporting a country's right to sovereignty territorial integrity, and a right to make their own political choices. Does the U.S. believe F-16 and long-range missiles are imperative for Ukraine's success on the battlefield? As I've said, the President is looking at these decisions a step by step. Um, he has said at this time F-16s and not these kinds of weapons that you're discussing are not uh, ready for us to send uh, for a whole number of reasons. But again, uh, we listen uh, to the Ukrainians. We work with them every day. Uh, we absolutely have given billions uh, of uh, security assistance uh, to Ukraine uh, to support their ability to defend their own country. Top Chinese diplomat Wang Yi's visit to Moscow this week is seen as paving the way for Chinese President Xi Jinping's planned state visit in coming months. Can you talk about People's Republic of China's role in Russia's invasion in Ukraine? Well, we're quite concerned about this. As we heard Secretary Blinken say at the Munich Security Conference after his meeting with Wang Yi, that he had said quite directly to Director Wang Yi that if uh, the People's Republic of China provides lethal support to Russia, uh, then it becomes a co-belligerent in many ways and that there would be consequences. Uh, and so this is a, a very concerning moment and a very big choice uh, for Xi Jinping uh, if he decides, in fact, to take this step. Does the U.S. believe China is considering sending lethal weapons to Russia? Do you see any evidence? Well, Secretary Blinken raised that concern because we do have that concern uh, and have said so directly to the People's Republic of China. Uh, we've shared our concern with many countries around the world and urged them to urge Xi Jinping to make the right choice here. You know, 
Uh, President Xi has said for a long time that he supports the UN Charter and the principles that underline the UN Charter, and core to that is sovereignty, territorial integrity, and the right for countries, the people of countries, to make their own choices about their future. That should be true for Ukraine. Uh, and so it really is mystifying why President Xi would stand with Russia, uh, who is the aggressor in this situation, uh, decided that for some reason uh, he believed Ukraine belonged to him, not to the Ukrainian people. So are you saying that there is indeed indication that China is considering sending lethal weapons to Russia? What I'm saying is that Secretary Blinken raised the issue because we obviously have reason to be concerned. What is the end game here? Does the U.S. see any way to facilitate an end to this conflict? How long will the U.S. continue to send money, weapons for this war that Russia does not seem to have any intention of ending? You know, I think Americans see that Ukrainians are fighting for themselves, they're courageous, they're resilient, uh, they have been without electricity, without power, without water. Parents, moms and dads, have had their children abducted by Russia, taken to Russia, separated from their families to quote unquote re-educate them to be Russians. That has terrible echoes in history. And there's not a mother and father in this world that doesn't understand how horrifying that is. So the kinds of actions that Vladimir Putin is taking are, as Secretary Blinken has defined, as the Vice President has said at the Munich Security Conference this past week, are indeed crimes against humanity. Then wh why hasn't the State Department designated Russia as a state that sponsors terrorism? Well, we are looking at all of the appropriate legal channels. There is no question there has to be accountability here, and there are many ways to achieve accountability, and we are open uh, to considering all of them. Ukraine today, Taiwan tomorrow, is a parallel drawn by many observers. On Tuesday, you met with the senior officials from Taiwan. What has been discussed? Do you see U.S.-Taiwan talks conducive to the peace and stability in the Taiwan Strait? We have said repeatedly uh, that no one should take unilateral action to change the status quo in the Taiwan Strait. Uh, Secretary Blinken uh, said today in uh, an open forum at the Atlantic Council uh, that indeed um, it's a concern for the entire world what happens in the Taiwan Strait because 50 percent of all containers, all shipping, uh, makes its way through the Taiwan Strait at one point or another. So it is in the world's interest that we maintain peace and stability in the Taiwan Strait, as we have done now for decades, under the current way we all have approached this. So we hope that Xi Jinping continues uh, the status quo in the Taiwan Strait. Um, we have a robust, unofficial relationship with Taiwan. Um, and I would say that although we've learned a lot of lessons and are learning lessons, out of uh, Vladimir Putin's unprovoked and premeditated and, and illegal and truly horrible invasion of a sovereign country. These are two very different instances. Uh, we'll take two very different approaches and responses with different countries involved uh, and different entities. And, and so we shouldn't overlearn the lessons, but we certainly have learned some. And the most important one is about partnerships and alliances around the world. When the world stands together, we can do extraordinary things. And that's been the case in Ukraine, and I hope that will be the case, will continue to be the case where the Taiwan Strait is concerned. Thank you so much for talking to Voice of America. Thank you very much.